Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at saving application data temporarily to memory. If you think about something like Microsoft Word, uh, it doesn't usually um, write to the, to the disk until you tell it to. And actually, increasingly, applications these days are saving automatically without being told to. But uh, at least um, up to this point, Usually, if you have some kind of application, you make changes in it, and then at some point you click a save button, which saves that data to a file or to a database. And I'm going to talk a bit about that in this tutorial. So at the moment, I've got this little application that I wrote. Whoops, not sure what's happened here. Um, that's uh, this thing, and um, I've I've modified this a bit since the last tutorial we've been building this up in the previous tutorials uh, one thing that I've done is I started off this series of tutorials uh, thinking about creating a user login system a very simple login system just to demonstrate design patterns and then I changed to making it a little screen for creating users in a database so I've changed some of the method names to reflect the kind of new functionality and of course the difference between the two is just that if you're creating a login system, you need to get user details from a database and compare them with what the user enters. Whereas if you're creating a user, a new user in a database, then you just need to take de details from a form and store them in a database. And the design patterns in both case, it, cases are going to be the same, um, or pretty much. So it makes no difference. And uh, what I've done is I've added this, this little uh, list down here that shows us everything that we've got in the database at the moment and we've got this save option in the menu here so now let's uh, let's add a new user here um, so I'll type for example Richard and a password I don't know hi there and another one hi there and click create user and um, what happens is I've, I've now got Richard added in fact to a, a data structure that's just in the memory of this application and actually for that reason it's got the ID 0 here because uh, the way I've written this the ID is, is created by the database when items are added to the database if I now save this then we now see um, an ID filled in for Richard so this isn't necessarily the, the, you know, the greatest swing application ever or the, or the best code ever. I'm just trying to demonstrate some basic concepts with this little application. So let's take a look at how this works. And in this tutorial, I'm not going to do what I usually do. I'm not going to type code in front of you just because there's a hell of a lot of code here and I had to sit and think about it a bit. So I'm just going to explain what I've done and the code, you'll be able to download and look at it at your leisure if you want to. And I'll tell you where to find it at the end of this video. So if we go back to Eclipse now. So uh, I've, I've, I'm still using MVC architecture, of, of course, and all the stuff that I've gone through in the previous tutorials. The main difference really is that, whoops, I think I've typed some weird character in here, but I'm not sure where. It's a bit disconcerting. Um, oh yeah, there we go. Sometimes, sometimes I find Eclipse, it won't save it, and it's because you've typed some control key, control alt combination or something, and you've got some weird character that's been typed in your editor. But anyway, it's, it's fine now. So I've added this um, in the model. I, I've had, since the beginning of this tutorial series, or since I started talking about MVC, in the model package, I, I created an actual class called model. And as I said, the these different parts of the application, the model view and controller, should be thought of as packages, not necessarily classes. You don't necessarily have a class called model or a class called view or controller. But nevertheless, here I have got a class called model and I'm now actually using it because previously I've been using these uh, database access object pattern classes. And what this model class does is it's it's just got a very simple data structure, which is actually a set of my person beans. And if you want to know more about um, using Java collections, check out the collection section in my Java for, for Beginners 
uh, free tutorial series which you can find by going to www.caveofprogramming.com but this is just a set of or it could it could equally equally well be a list really of person beans it's just that a set means that you, you only have unique uh, beans in there and um, the model's job here is this model class's job is just that you can add people to it you can delete people from it uh, you can get a full list of people from it as well and when you when you change the data in it it uses the observer pattern that we talked about previously to fire a data changed event so um, other classes can listen to it in this case the view and uh, they, they, they are informed when some data changes in here and they can update themselves as necessary and I've also put a save method in here and a load method and these just uh, they just use the database access object pattern and some JDBC code to uh, to save or load the data. So the idea is that as you're using the application, you add or remove objects, beans basically, from this class and uh, your view reflects what's in this model class. And when you um, save when you go to save the save function in your application, only then does this save stuff to, in this case, a database or to a file or whatever. And this is a really common technique to use, that you have um, some kind of data structure reflecting what's currently going on in your application. And only when the user goes to save or load do you actually interact with the file system or with a database or whatever. Uh, so it doesn't have to happen like this, but it's a good way of doing it. And um, for many applications, at least. And I think uh, you can really see uh, how Model View Controller simplifies this uh, this whole system now. Because if we go to Controller here, actually, let's start with application. So uh, my my basic application class here, I've called it application, has the main method that sets off my swing app. And it also creates the model, the view, and the controller. And we can see that the, in this case, the controller is listening to the view and model. Well, actually, that's typical and normal. But in this case, the view is also listening to the model, which, uh, as I said before, um, some interpretations of MVC would not have the view interacting with the model. It would always go through the controller. But here you can see clearly that it, that it does. The view does listen to the model. And uh, we see here that the controller is listening to the view through various interfaces. And uh, this is all the observer pattern as well. And here we see that the view is listening for particular changes in the model as defined by this interface here. This set people change, this change, uh, people change listener interface. And uh, if we look at this, the interface that's being used here. This set people change listener accepts a something that implements an interface. A people I've called it a people change listener interface, which is the view. The view implements that interface. And if you look at the interface, let's go to the view package. I think I put it in the people change listener. Maybe I called it. Uh, is that right? Let's have a look at this method. Yeah, people changed listener. Let's go to this method. If I just click, um, if I just press F3 here, we can go to the method. And there's my people change listener. I might have put this in the wrong package, actually. Let's go to F3 again. Here it is. Um, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's here in the controller package. Actually, this should really be in the view. My apologies. Let me move it. But this people change listener, um, it just has one method on people changed. And if we look at the view now, we can see um, here the view class implements this interface. And when uh, when the data changes in the in the data model in the model class, then the view. Um, is told about that change because it's, it's listening to the uh, to the model and it updates itself appropriately. And um, as I say, uh, 
you don't always have the view listening to the model. This could be handled by the controller. So you can see what listens to what by looking at the, the class that hooks everything up. And, or you could even do this with something like Spring, for example, which I hope to tackle in a future tutorial. Um, but um, at the moment, this is all being hooked together. The different packages are hooked together in this, this class here. And also, if you look at the controller, and this is the really great bit about model view controller, the controller is, apart from the fact that the view listens to the model in this case, um, the controller is hooking everything up together. It's listening to stuff, it's listening to the model, listening to the view, and it's sending instructions to the model and sending instructions to the view. So the controller is, is controls everything, makes everything happen. And I've also um, even done stuff like, um, in the previous implementations of this software, I, I had a, a window listener so that when you open the window or when you close the window, the view was opening and closing the database connection. And what I'm doing now is I'm making the view raise an open event and raise a close event. Uh, and then the controller is actually opening and closing the database connection. So using MVC now, we've got one central point where we can see basically how, um, how the different messages are passing through different parts of the application. And this is quite small, but in, um, in a bigger application, uh, for example, I worked a bit on um, SPSS Clementine, which is a statistical application. You might have like a whole table, like it could be a, uh, a hash table or something, hash set or something of different things that can happen and uh, you know different events that can be raised and different methods that get call, called in response to those events. So this class could potentially be really big and in that case it's really, really helpful to be able to look at one class and see how all the messages are being routed through the application, see what events are being listened to and what happens in response to those events. Um, I think that's about it for this tutorial. Um, I, have this, I have this feeling that there's something else that I meant to tell you, but I, I can't remember what it was now. So, um, so yeah, basically you, you see how Model View Controller um, hooks everything together here and uh, yeah, I, th I think that's I think that's basically it, and and this this really is for a little application like this. This doesn't really matter that much, you, you know. For a little application like this, you could have adhered to terrible programming standards, and it would still have been okay. But as soon as your application starts to grow in size, you you do need stuff like this in order to organise your code. Otherwise, it just becomes horribly unmaintainable. Want to look at the uh, source code for this application and there are two places you can find it. If you go to www.caveaprogramming.com um, this course is on Udemy. It's hosted on udemy.com which is where you may be watching it at the moment. And if you're, if you're watching this video on Udemy uh, you can just go to the lectures and um, any source code you can download here on the right hand side and you can also find this source code if you scroll if you go to caveofprogramming.com and scroll down because this is one of my free courses uh, you can find under this YouTube Java video tutorial section at least at the moment I may change this in future but at the moment you can just um, click and see this video on YouTube as well which you may also be watching it on YouTube and um, the source code I usually make, I usually put a downloadable link on the page so you can also find it there. And um, there's lots more tutorials on Cave of Programming if you are interested. And I've just finished creating a Perl tutorial which has uh, 12 free videos that's uh, it's here. And there's a load of Java stuff, some of it's free. And even the paid stuff has some free videos so you can get started with. Android programming, uh, Java Swing programming, or um, uh, Servlet and JSPs, so that's web programming Java as well. You've got um, enough free videos there to get you started completely for free. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, there's lots more design patterns to tackle. So I'm going to go on to tell you about some more smaller scale design patterns 
like a uh, factory pattern which we haven't really covered explicitly and uh, well lots lots of other stuff so um, keep checking Kava programming and if you want to be notified when uh, about regularly about when videos are out although I'm a bit slow about sending out this but there is a, a newsletter that you can subscribe to as well by clicking this link okay so that's it for this time and until next time happy coding <laughs>